the levels of violence that have been going on recently in Britain have been quite staggering. I mean, we knew already that uh, the streets of, of our country were kind of um, uh, rather running out of control and that there was lawlessness everywhere, but it seems to be getting worse, doesn't it? Well, it does, and I, I think there are ways, and in fact, recent events have shown that there are ways in which the authorities could deal with this. I mean, <clears throat> the, um, the, the police reaction to those riots was appropriate mm. and a, an awful lot of people were rounded up thanks to cctv images and they were put in court very quickly and dealt with some of them jailed now why can't they do the same sort of thing with the possession of knives uh, i've often argued that what they should do is do impromptu uh, knife checks with metal detectors surround a station or a, a center of a town and just make sure that all the entrances to a certain area <clears throat> have metal detectors so everybody in that who leaves it or comes into it is automatically checked. That would very rapidly stop people carrying knives. Mm. If they did this around the well-known crime centres of London and Liverpool and Leeds and all the other major conurbations of this country, it would have a very quick effect. But um, it's, it would be deemed, especially in London, by uh, Sadiq Khan as a, an act of racism because most of the people carrying those knives or using them against each other are black people. Right. Well, Matt, Sadiq Khan, of course, was too busy out celebrating the return of Team GB uh, when they came back off the plane to uh, to London the other day uh, to get anywhere bothered about sort of, you know, people being stabbed uh, in the middle of Leicester Square, uh, people being stabbed uh, in different parts of uh, Stratford. Um, this is all in the same week, by the way. Um, people uh, getting shot by police in, in parts of Surrey, uh, which he may not say is London, uh, but, you know, no doubt his, uh, uh, his congestion charge goes out all the way, or the ULES charge goes out all the way to there. You know, he doesn't seem to be in any way bothered about the rising crime levels in London and the kind of, you know, uh, the fact that people like um, uh, Jim Ratcliffe said the other day that he doesn't feel safe coming into London anymore, he doesn't wear a watch when he comes into London anymore, he talks about watching on CCTV uh, as a man who was having his watch stolen by some thugs in Knightsbridge was stabbed to death outside of his office. Yes, I mean, it is very intimidating uh, when you particularly in cases, for instance, like the one in Leicester Square, where the 13-year-old uh, girl was stabbed, uh, in broad daylight, um, people do feel frightened about being out in public. They're constantly vigilant and watching people. And, uh, you know, when you see idle people wandering around with hoodies, often with uh, baseball caps underneath and mm. sometimes sunglasses and face masks, what are you intended to feel other than intimidated and frightened because you don't know what that person is mm. going to do since someone else perhaps dressed similarly only recently has attacked someone well that's right i mean somebody said to me the other day perhaps <coughs> it should be considered uh, in london if nowhere else uh, to make mask wearing actually illegal i think that should be an absolute in immediate ban and it should have been in place a long time ago yeah. You can't even blame this particular government for the problems that we're facing now. All of these have grown and uh, rapidly grown under the Conservative regime of 14 years, and they've left a legacy, which, of course, Labour is using to its advantage. But Labour now has to deal with this, and they are the last party possibly of all that's actually going to crack down on the sort of anti-social conduct which tony blair used to criticize but did so little to actually yeah. prevent no, exactly right. And I mean, you know, we're now into, what, second month of the Labour government and, you know, the first month hasn't gone brilliantly for them. Um, what do you make of uh, Keir Starmer's performance so far? Well, I think that the jury is still out, but the evidence is already piling up. So uh, we do have a socialist government which is looking uh, for dividing lines between the left and the right, the potential to conservative voters and those who are already likely to vote for Labour. And you've seen this in the two-tier policing, which I think is undeniable. And I think the way that uh, things are shaping up for um, the budget under Rachel Reeves in October already begins to suggest that those who have savings or are uh, on a comfortable income are going to be the primary targets. And that includes better off pensioners, not very ne not necessarily rich pensioners, mm. but anybody who's got savings or accrued some sort of uh, capital assets that uh, help them to get through to old age, mm. uh, they're going to be the targets for quite a, quite a spiteful, I think quite a spiteful budget.
Yes, absolutely right. And I was asking uh, Dan Hodges a bit earlier today why Keir Starmer has been a bit quiet this week, and he reckoned it was because he's sort of concentrating on uh, international matters, you know, uh, busy telling Iran not to uh, attack Israel um, and sort of coming up with reasons to, uh, uh, to distract, I suppose, from his um, domestic problems. Well, I'd, I'd like to think that he was busy doing something constructive, and uh, maybe he is, we don't know. It is a fairly secretive government, mm. and I think that that's the style of Keir Starmer himself. He reveals nothing more than he absolutely has to. And uh, frankly, I think that um, the reluctance of this government to actually do things which are the hard yards mm. of governing, the challenges which have to be uh, uh, confronted in terms of domestic upheaval, and in particular, the now undeniable challenge of mass uncontrolled immigration and multiculturalism. It, this government is not going to tackle those, I'm sorry to say, in any significant way. And so we are, I think, doomed for more of the same.